Da -da 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 -da. All right, this could be the finale for Ace Attorney Justice for All. It could be. There, there could be a part three to this trial. Personally, I don't know how that could be, but I don't think that's the case as of as of starting this recording right now. So, I am going to start this video off, assuming that this is the finale for Justice for All. Part 4-2 trial. Let's go. I'm excited, actually. Two thirty-five. My God. It must be. Yeah, we're halfway through, almost. Ah, uh, the judge. I'm about to like get so tired. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. Get yes, Your Honor. <laughs> yes. Your Honor. <laughs> I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? I... That is... It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth. If you could please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Miss Impax's suicide note. Oh, he found out who it is, that's right. Quick recap. Dude, Will Powers, like, all these people ne never tell me anything. So he saw the butler, right? Who he assumed was the bellboy because it, you know, he's dressed like a bellboy or what have you. That dude went in there, did the job, took the Winnie the Pooh bear, brought it back to Matt, right? Or maybe Adrian? I'm I'm confused on that. I haven't edited or rewatched the previous video yet, but it turns out the bear is also a mechanism jewelry box they called it. So she opened it and inside was the suicide note. Edgeworth mentioned that it had girly handwriting or something and we weren't sure if it was actually Celeste's. So, Etchworth wanted to do a handwriting analysis. He did that during the break. Basically, the whole trial beforehand was just buying time. So let's let's continue. Yeah. So Gumshoe also just missed the killer with Maya, the very big circus near the tent, right? And there's a telephone booth and what have you. Okay. Y yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that this suicide note is a forgery. Nani? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This... This note was not written by Cele er, by Miss Impax herself. It is a fake. This is just like entertainment TV for this, this crowd, brother. Mr. Edgeworth, would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impax, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis. However, it appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Corita. Get out of here, brother. I thought it was Matt. These guys are so evil. Mr. Corita? Well, well. It looks like Miss Impacts never left a suicide note after all. And Adrian always talking about, like, Adrian would be one to leave a note. Like, I know that. I know her. She was my mentor. You didn't know Miss Impacts like that, apparently. She never wrote anything about On Guard. She never- Whoa! Okay. Okay, so she was never going to disclose anything. Juan Corita really manufactured that note just so he could take out Matt, brother. No way! Dude, Celeste is literally a pawn. She was a pawn in their game. Literally nothing more, dude. She was an object for those guys. However, Your Honor, even though this suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ongard could not have known that, and so that facts and so that facts remain unchanged. Is that a typo again, Capcom? Come on, guys. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm. 
That does sound very plausible. This theory that Ongard had no idea that the suicide note was a fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. Yeah, only Corita and Andrews know how to open it. Found inside the figurine, it tells of Ongard's horrible misdeeds. Yeah, if it was in here, he wouldn't know that it was fake, right? Yeah, present evidence. I'm just gonna present the bear. I probably should have saved, huh? Let's save again. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, then it's impossible for Mr. Ongar to not have known it was a fake. The bear, right? Yeah. Wait, really? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, your response? I believe that even more important than finding out if this note is real or not is whether the attorney's badge pinned to that man's chest is real. That is the million dollar question. Well, how is it not the bear? Yes, I agree. What the f- That it's impossible for Mr. Ongard to not have known- Okay, I hate when words are worded like this. Okay, hold on. Then it's impossible for Mr. Nongard to not have known it was a fake. Wait. It's impossible for him to have not known. To not have known. So he should have known. Fuck. Um, the camera? He was spying on him, right? Yeah, okay, okay. I thought it was the bear because, like, if it was in- No, but that would mean he wouldn't know. Phoenix was trying to prove that he did know. It's impossible that he'd not have known. Yeah, that's... I hate words, bro. What is this little item called again? Um, a video camera, your honor? Well, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right, a camera. Oh, you... You kids and your fancy toys nowadays. Mr. Edgeworth. Earlier, you claimed that Mr. Ongard knew of the existence of this note, because he was spying on the victim. Isn't that right? Oh, so he could have written that note at any time, really? Yeah, if that were true, then this means Mr. Ongard would have known that the victim had forged the note. Right, he's spying on him, right? You said there was one in his house. Oh my gosh, okay, I, I get it, I get it. So then, the defendant knew this suicide note was a fake. Then why would he want it? And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, your honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ongard's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared into thin air. Th Thanos snap meme. But your honor. It's not as if Mr. Ongard monitored Mr. Corita 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ongard didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? Ugh. Oh, this is heat. These guys are like legends in the courtroom. Mr. Edgeworth, it looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. As I figured. Huh? As you figured? As I figured. It came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you are not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ongard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Ooh, Mr. Ongard. Yep, Matt Ongard, he's gonna call him to the stand, bro. Well, that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. 
It's worth stuttering? It's not like him at all. Unusual? What sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is the one is the one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of Who was it that hired Shelley de Killer to commit murder? That's impossible. Who in the No such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty. Y yes, Mr. Edgeworth. Who is this witness? It is it's um Yes? Go on, who is it? Ooh, I was saying in the previous video Shelly the Killer would not show up in a courthouse. Why would he be here? Wait. Wait. The man himself. Mr. Shelly the Killer. Oh, Mr. the Killer. N Nani? Yeah, I was about to say, w wait. Shelly the Killer? Um, you mean the killer? Uh, I, I mean the assassin? Yes, your honor. He's coming here, to the witness stand. Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for, I ask for your for permission. Hmm. Uh, well, Mr. Wright? Y yes? Is this all right with you? Do I have a choice here? Can't really do much else to drag this trial out. Right, thanks. The defense has no objections, your honor. I wonder if it really is all right to do this. Very well then. Very well then. The prosecution calls its witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way left to us? Now then, witness, name and occupation. Your name and your, uh, occupation, please. I'm not surprised at this, actually. What am I doing thinking that he's actually gonna show up? We're, we're hunting him down with Maya. I'm an idiot, brother. Sometimes, like, things just don't click with me. I don't get it. I really don't. Okay, he's the killer, right? Yeah, this isn't the butler, this isn't the bellboy, this is the killer. So he's getting the, uh, yeah, Unahara treatment. That's the guy from Bleach, Mr. Hat and Clogs. Very good, sir. My name is Shelly the Killer, and I am a professional assassin. Oh, uh, I say, w what is going on here? Your Honor. How can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. DeKiller will testify to this court. He sent it to us? Either he didn't know Matt wouldn't, Matt's with me. So this must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. That's right, he did get called off, like, right before the video ended. Oh no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. De Killer himself. Witness, please present some sort of proof that you are, in fact, Shelley De Killer. I understand. Please wait a second. Oh, don't put Maya on, that's savage. Oh my gosh, this dude is evil. I'm so hungry. M Maya! Maya! A, a voice. M Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelley the Killer. It looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. It almost seems like a regular thing with you two. Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so... Now then, witness, there is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? 
at the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Corita. Is this correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Corita. <laughs> now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. Th this is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it. A bad dream. Yeah, Phoenix is the only one having bad dreams here. Shelly to kill her. What is he going to say? He's about- he, uh, d Dude, Shelly to kill her, I guarantee you, top tier wordsmith. He's about to, like, mix up his words and confuse us all to hell. There's something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. I told you, dude. Like, this dude is smart. Hmm. Mr. DeKiller seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. Edgeworth, confidence levels, rising. While he may appear to be our enemy, your honor, Mr. DeKiller is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself thing? See, they keep highlighting this. Trust between his clients and himself thing. Dude, what does that... Mm. See, whenever I feel uneasy, I always say, that's just second nature to me now. Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collect it, Phoenix. Okay. Okay. I guess, if you say so, I guess. Okay. I'm <laughs> I'm really pressing Shelly to kill her through a two-way radio. Oh, that's funny. We can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients... I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? Sorry. Go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. It's only because you don't know about my situation, Judge. Jeez. Nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. And that is why you're testifying in this matter. This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the de killer name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before. But if it ever did... Y yes? That person wouldn't be my client for very long, if you know what I mean. They would certainly... Th that's enough. Please, no more. Very well. It was only a hypothetical anyway. That is the reason I'm here today on this witness stand. It seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Ooh, Matt on guard went in too deep, bro. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime, another of the crime in order to save themselves. This person tried to implicate another this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You... Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now. Excuse me, but would you care to die? 
no, no, I didn't say anything. Judge had better watch himself. Watch it, bro. I get it. We get it, dude. Like, we understand, so please tell us the name of your client already. I'm afraid I cannot do that. Still have a few things to say before I do. Ugh! An egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. I think a lot of people need to hear that. <laughs> Somehow that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff, just tell us the name already. Patience. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and close, so you're going to have to work to get him to talk. Not his therapist, you know. God damn, really? I I have to present something here? Hold on. What do I have, even? Um. Ooh, the picture card. That is his thing. There's something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Maybe I don't have to present a piece of evidence, maybe I have to present... ...a person. You know? It does? Uh, I don't see anything. Yeah, me neither. It was just a guess. What are the profiles? Bro, stop it. Like... <laughs> that's why. Stop. Um, a professional always leaves a Shelly card near his victim. Near his victim's body. Oh, this is kind of hard. Like, I don't immediately know what to put right off the bat. I feel like I really gotta present this card. Somewhere. Either the card or a profile. Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. False. I'm an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. Okay, that has been highlighted so many times throughout this episode, I I don't remember, like, where, where it leads to. I, I'm kind of stuck right now. <laughs> Let me press everything again, and get an idea. Um, because I kind of forget. Okay. I'll, I'll edit all this out, obviously. Okay, so what does he say here? Right, I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. Wait, wait, wait. What does Will Powers thing say? Okay. In exchange, I trust that my clients have are discreet about me and my identity. These are the roles and duties an assassin and his client are to carry out. What is this? Like, I hate when, like, ugh, I hate when, um, <laughs> you press every single statement and then you go back and you press again. I'm sorry, but I was just wondering about something you said. You said that your client had already broken the rules? That's right, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, he did touch on that, but like, ugh. Okay, I'm just bad. I didn't see through the lines. Sometimes the lines are too thick, I can't see. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person? I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. I have a feeling it's not Matt. You know what I mean? Just my luck. An assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone. Do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. Yay! If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case... I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. 
and that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Rice, but there, Mr. Rice, <laughs> Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness. Hmm. What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corita? That person's name is. <laughs> Stop! Stop it! Stop! Didn't I say this? What, like, didn't I say something in the previous- Dude, the two birds with one stone thing! I knew it! I knew it! But Matt must have found out then! Matt would know because Adrian dis- mm -hmm. Okay, let's just keep going. Adrian Andrews. Ah! Yeah, right. W witness. That's not who you told me it was earlier. Wait, what? Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. What? Oh, this d Okay, this is he. Keep it up. This can't be. On the phone earlier. What's going on here, Mia? My guess is that Mr. DeKiller just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Oh, okay, so he's lying. Oh god, okay, I'm trash. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. DeKiller told him a different name. Matt Ongard, perhaps. I knew it. Oh, so he w okay, I don't really know at this point. Okay, this- this is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But- but you were the one who summoned this witness. Ah! Ah, you, Shelly the Killer. My testimony is the truth, on God. The defendant at the moment is Matt Ongard, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. All of a sudden it feels like we could actually win this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, let's turn up the heat. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead... <laughs> provided this fake suicide note. Furthermore, there is possibility the defendant knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. Mr. DeKiller's client who requested the murder of was not the defendant at all. No. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Matt Ongard is innocent. Wait, okay, something doesn't feel right now. See, when things become too, like, um, too obvious, I guess, like, uh, I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please, continue your discussion, and call me when you have reached a verdict. Bro. Bailiff, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? With the way this is going, Ongard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... But Edgeworth is right, the killer is lying. And Ongard... My... I... He's... Okay, to be fair, who says Juan Carita didn't have the same kind of, like, personality thing? That dude could have done some- something and became an evil guy, too. He doesn't have to have scratches on his face. This is trippy, dude. 
Can I live with myself if I win this? Okay, wait, let me pause. Bro. Okay, so wait, what's... Okay, at the moment, what's the worst thing that Matt Ongard has done that we actually definitively know of? Fooling us? Becoming like a split personality type guy? Like on some James McAvoy? But wait... What did he say, even? He said Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. So does that mean the killer doesn't know about Matt's kind of, like, split thing? His personality thing? Bro, okay, wait. Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor. The prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelley to killer is certainly lying under oath on God. Hmm. It wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please, that testimony just now. It was all one big lie. Then why you sweatin'? Miss mm. Andrews. The suicide note may have been fake. But that man, Matt... He's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death. It was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. You were- <laughs> That testimony just now. You have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie. I don't know who to- I don't know who to believe at this point. I really don't. But Mr. DeKiller himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there is quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and the button, donning the Nickel Samurai costume. But that's... that's... You even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste Impacts was a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. I... no... Mr. Wright... Nani, what? What do you want me to say? You... you know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story. Who the real killer is. Tell them. Please. Help me. This... oh my god, I hate this. <laughs> yes, I know the truth. Are you sure? Like, what do you mean? Wait! Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor? I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Cat, it's only been 40 minutes. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. I hate this! This doesn't feel right! Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? Dude, request the trial continue? Because, like, okay, because, because, right? It's all about the evidence. If we get that evidence, we can actually piece stuff together, like quite literally, as a puzzle. We can't just go on the killer's word and say like, oh yeah, my client's Adrian Andrews. Like, okay, he says you, but like, you know what I mean? Request the trial continue. Phoenix. I can't do it, Mia. I, I can't accept a not guilty. I can't. You were a lawyer. I know. But... But Matt Ongard is a killer. A murderer. I can't. I, I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted... Bro, she has a dependent nature. She wouldn't be clinging to be like that. And I'm no better than Ongard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact that it is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. I could have gotten on guard convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If 
I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I... I trust him. Yes, you do. Mr. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. DeKill. Uh, am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right. But... but... That witness has cleared your client through this testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. To see through witnesses' lies and to find the truth? That is my job, Your Honor. This is what... This is what Edgeworth was talking about. To, to be a lawyer. To be a lawyer. Nani. There's still more evidence to look at. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Uh. Very well. The trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. DeKiller. With pleasure, Your Honor. Ugh, we're a team sometimes. Has a verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little bit more. I do, you catch me saving every five minutes. About? All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about usually done? Yeah, what was he pointing at me for? But shall we have him testify about now? What shall we have him testify about now? Mr. Killer, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You legal people and your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? Facts. No wonder complete no, eh, no wonder people complain about jury duty. Uh Okay, as I've already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client my client did it to frame another for the crime. Yo! That's slick of Adrian Andrews, if that is the truth. You hire someone to kill one of your targets, and then, like, manufacture it to make it look like your other target did that crime. Adrian Andrews is smart, brother. If, if that's actually true, that's fire. While pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene, Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carrito was dead. God damn, this is a long testimony. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. And that makes sense too, doesn't it? What has Matt Ongard done? He hasn't done anything. Hmm. This is a most unexpected turn of events. For the, um, <laughs> fifth time now? However, this time everything has finally been revealed. Objection! Right. Just a second, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth. We still have the cross-examination to do. But... You don't need to question testimony like this, do you, Mr. Wright? <laughs> Your Honor, the defense will question the witness. As if I have a choice here. Right, you also need to buy some time. Huh? Huh? Why? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then... And I'll expose the lies in that oh-so-beneficial excuse me testimony, I suppose. Bro! At this point, I kinda do want Adrian to be the killer now. 
Dude, that was like the most sound testimony like ever. It makes sense to me. I don't understand what's going on anymore. Yeah, that makes two of us. About my client part two. The Last of Us Part 2. Always save at the beginning of cross-examinations. <clears throat> what is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, it might raise suspicions on his end. On his end. But I have to do something to waste more time. Um, witness. About requesting a hit. Yes? How much is your fee? I see you are also quite a dark-hearted man, Mr. Attorney. I told you, that shit was spiky too. Huh? If you would like to talk business, we can do so after the trial. I- no, 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 I'm, I'm not the- Mr. Wright. Yes? Y you you want to kill me. You want me dead, don't you? Why would you think something like that, Your Honor? Guilty! Mr. Phoenix Wright, you are hereby declared guilty. Holy shit. Witness, please continue. Why did you disclose the name of your client? They are your client, are they not? That was a funny, that was a funny one. I'm surprised that, did I get an achievement for that? That, that felt like an achievement, uh, press. I would think that most people wouldn't be available to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be very effective at my job. Ah, yeah. Well, a change in occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. And that's what Phoenix has been thinking too, so maybe I am wrong. That goes without saying, Mr. DeKiller. And their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. However, my client this time thought that they could run away from their guilt. Ooh, see it? Mmm, I'm trying, I'm dying to figure out how this doesn't add up. Because to me right now, it does. Like, I'm convinced, bro. Are you talking about the button and the knife? Yes, and my business card. Right, oh, this card, right. <sighs> so that no one has to waste their time, including the police, I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. That's nice of him, actually. Y you try to make things easy? My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. He's pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything, to go and stab the deceased with a knife, and even hide my card from sight, that is something I cannot overlook. Hmm, it's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not without him being here. Or not without him being here. There should have been a comma there. Or pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. What trash. So you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually, most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan for your alibi, too. Your alibi, too? Uh, no, I already told you I have no intention of using your services. Ever. <laughs> Here go the judge giving me, like, the side eye. Why does he keep looking at me? Okay. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carrillo was dead. Right, from the very beginning. I should have, like, before she entered the room. That is correct. From before my client visited the room. All of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. And also, this dude is set up at Matt Ongard's house. You know? Isn't he? Like... We got him! He has Maya! This should be- oh my god, dude, my brain is falling apart right now. Jeez. I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. Nani? 
Wait, what did he just say? I, I totally missed that whole thing. What did you say? From the very beginning. That's odd. Right. Okay. Uh, after that, after that statement, I'm thinking about the wine glass with the tomato juice in it. I feel like that might have something to come into play, too. I don't know. Okay, well, let's just keep pressing. So why do you think your client did that? What do you mean by why? Well, fiddling around at the scene of the crime is pretty risky. And why would someone who has requested a murderer go to the crime scene anyway? Hmm, that is true. I assume it was probably done to frame Mr. Ongar. No shit. Like, if that's the case, then why didn't the person just request that you do it? That you do it? Oh, okay. Sadly, that is not possible. Due to the nature of his work, maybe, huh? My job is to kill, that is all, and to leave my business card behind, naturally. The business card is so my clients may escape blame. To protect them is my duty. Hmm. Even if they say it's for revenge, setting someone else up to take your fall... That act is what I was referring to when I said a client had broken the rules. And that's all you have to testify? Yes, and I pray that I will never be called to the stand again. Again? As in you plan to continue? I must, as I have yet to find a person who to take my place and become my fourth successor. Actually, how would you like a new life, Mr. Attorney? Excuse me? Uh, no, I'm good, thanks, really. Or you really know? I don't know what kind of man the judge thinks I am now. What are you going to do now, Phoenix? All I can do now is expose the lies. That's true. However, you realize that will be very bad for our client, right? Don't remind me. I'm so confused. Me too, dude. The one thing I know for sure is I can't let this trial end yet. Want me to keep pressing him then? What do you mean? Okay, let's save again. The wine glass, right? Yep, I knew it too. I called that during my initial press. Cool. Just kidding, not the initial press. Maybe the second one. But I was right. Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. Tequiller. Her fingerprints are on the glass. Is, is, that, is that what... Huh? Wait, what? Found next to the victim, it's filled with tomato juice, bears Andrew's fingerprints. Fingerprints. I keep saying fingerprints. Stop it. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room... Your client had no idea that Juan Carita had been murdered. B but how do you know that? From this wine glass, your honor. But didn't Will Powers testify that he brought him the tomato juice? Oh, I guess he didn't pour him anything. The glass? Mr. DeKiller's supposed client thought Mr. Carita had only fainted. Which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, your honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. Oh, true, 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 true. In hindsight, she wouldn't want to be targeted whatsoever. Let's go! I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? It... Isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client, as you claim, then your client should have knowledge of Mr. Corita's death. Okay, see? 
I was waiting for something to come in and, like, make me change my mind, and there it is. If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. Crap. How strange. Y yes Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Nani? Phoenix! If the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble! Yeah, I know. Objection! Crap. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Uh, sorry. Well, that was an awfully weak objection for the two of you. Anyway, I'm positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. <clears throat> Very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items the killer left behind to get here. I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. That's exactly my thought. That's why I pressed. Or continued, or whatever. Request taken. So this is Adrian Andrews, supposedly, asking for the request. Okay. This request came down to me uh, about a week ago. A week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the awards ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory and I believe I have made no mistakes. Yikes. It's short. I hate short testimonies. Sometimes they're the hardest. Mm. So, you physically met your client, huh? Ooh, that is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to my building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Wright? Your cross-examination, please. Ooh. Ooh. Request taking. It's the start of a new cross-examination, so he's it. <laughs> right, maybe about a week ago. Okay, I just press. One week ago. Are you sure? Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations. And I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please stop. In any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time. It was a request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. Did you ask why on that specific night? No. I try to fulfill all my conditions, all the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? Press further. So what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. I'm sure it was all for the bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in Juan Carita's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for me. <gasps> oh, I thought they were talking about the bear that the camera was hidden in, not the, um, not the little wooden bear. Yeah, not this one. The figurine. Yeah, he must be talking about this bear puzzle. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. A fake suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to his hotel room. He was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference after all. After all? That is correct. If I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where that bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Uh. Let's just say it was very important, yeah. The testimony just now has made one thing clear. And that is... The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Right. Huh? 
Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Wright, I think all of us already knew that. Uh, oh, really? Witness, please continue with your testimony. Whatever, I didn't lose health, I'm not mad at it. I met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. Okay, what bar? So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? See, he paused, bro. Those pauses, those three dots, always mean something. It's a stutter. Of course I did. What was that? What was that brief pause? Press further, what are you talking about? Witness! I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. That the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, we get testimony. Uh, shh. Huh. Yeah, all of his stuff is important. I'm just elongating this trial. Come on now. It's very important, Your Honor. If Mr. DeKiller had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. Hmm. So you're saying that his client really was Adrian Andrews? Uh, um, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. Ah! So lost, who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. Now then, would the witness please continue? That is what occurred. I trust my memory and I believe I have made no mistakes yet. So your client was Adrian Andrews. That is correct. Well, he says the two of them met. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw his suspicion. If you can do that, you should establish, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. Yikes. Okay, well I pressed him on everything. Okay, so wait, let me do that again and say it wasn't important. What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I've already told you, Mr. Wright. I did. It was only through talking with him... It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. It... Dude, I'm going crazy right now. Does he not know who Adrian Andrews is? That's when I thought I can trust this person as a client. Was it? Wait. Wait, he said him. Adrian Andrews is a chick. It's true what they say about talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now? Yes? If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Right. Dude, you should have seen my face, bro. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of utmost importance. Huh? Really? If that's the case, witness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. Bro, let me just present Adrian's thing, bro. Do you not know Adrian and- He does- Bro, we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I would like to go over this one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct! I'm sorry. 
But that is an impossible tale. What? Shelly to kill her? You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. Nani? Wh why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up. About her. So what is the issue? Wh wait, what did you just say? What did you just say now? About her? If you have ever met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you she is a woman. Oh! Whoa! We got him, brothers! Ugh. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following, that he always meets face to face with his clients when taking their request. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor. That is exactly the point. That means Mr. DeKiller's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. Yuck. That is gross, actually. Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. You know what? I was silently always thinking to myself, like, just, you know how names can either be a boy or a girl's name? Adrian? Yes. Adrian Andrews is, without a doubt, a very androgynous name. I don't know what that means. Word of the day? Word of the day, by the way, is beholden. Unlucky for Mr. DeKiller. The entire team he was on the stand, the entire time he was on the stand, no one had stayed in Adrian Andrews' gender. Stop. And so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. Wh what What is going on? We got him, that's what's going on. Shelly the Killer. This court demands an explanation. Uh, um, uh, I, I think somehow... I must have mixed up this client with another. So does that mean you remember something different now? Y yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Ugh. No, he's just going to spit out more lies. Well, good. It's just more time. Very well, but this time, please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. It, like, once I'm warmed up doing the judge's voice, dude, I feel like I'm on it. Yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The request was for the murder of Juan Carita and two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. Trash. Hmm. So you took this job through a letter? Didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony. If anything, he testified that he doesn't take requests by letter, or mail, or call, or anything. Dude, on God. Means nothing in this courtroom. Which means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know. I can't make him suspicious. But... I think we're okay. Look, we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. No matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. That's just some bro shit right there. They're bros. It's like Dante and Virgil, bro. They're bros. Now then, let's begin the cross-examination. With pleasure. With pleasure, Judge. Quest taking part two. Jesus. My god, dude. Ah, I'm itching. I can't press the press button. But didn't you just say that you always meet your clients? That's what I'm saying. Like, yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is simply not possible. But didn't you meet your client this time? No, I did not. 
Oh, come now, let's stop with this game of cat and mouse. Using your silkiest voice is not going to work on me. Alright then, just cough it up and confess. Mr. Wright, you can't badger a witness with such harsh words. <sighs> You're a lawyer, so behave like one and present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling cheese. Now then, do you have any proof that Mr. DeKiller met with this client? Do you have any proof that Mr. DeKiller met with his client? Let's say no for now. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof. Hmm, I see. Then your line of questioning was just another waste of time. Sadly for us, Your Honor, that is the nature of right and wrong. Oof. There have been times when I took a job without having to meet my client. And why could you not meet certain clients? Recently, I have been receiving more requests. If I met each and every client, I would lose some nice business opportunities. Nice business opportunities? Top of which, the times have changed. It is now the age of information and computers, correct? Well, I have joined the times, and now take requests via electronic mail. Electronic mail? Do you have to mail that in a special insulated envelope? Ah, I'm very sorry. I despise the shortening of words. What I mean by electronic email is what is commonly referred to as email. Email? In the contest of m m mimicry? Mimicry? I don't know what that word is. The judge would be to parrot, hands down. <clears throat> Oh, Mimi Cry. Okay, like mimicking? Okay. Anyway, so you took this job without having met your client and. Request was for the murder of Juan Carita and two. Okay, yeah, what are the two or three other small things? Right. Yes. And what were these other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. What should I do? Should I let him slide with that? No! It'd be really bad if I pushed his buttons the wrong way and he got mad. Okay, but maybe those two or three other things would help us, right? <gasps> two or three other things, like maybe be his butler, huh? Right? Jeez. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney. Yes? Everything I have said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Which is why I wonder what is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. Nanny? Could it be... That you are planning to betray your own client? That's... I smell the stench of a backstabber, Mr. Attorney. Should you turn out to be one... W wait uh Oh. This is looking really bad. I shouldn't press my luck. Alright, I have to think. Is this worth pursuing? Let it go, let it go, let it go. I think we don't have the evidence yet. Let it go. The killer sounds like one sharp man. Should try to find a better way to do this without making him suspicious. Let's continue with the testimony. Witness if you please. Okay. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. So you're saying that you never saw your client's face? Not even once? There he goes stuttering again. I did. Once. It was when I went to give my client the figurine. Hmm, yes, I see. But Miss Andrews was wearing a mask at the time. A mask? The Nickel Samurai Mask. The Nickel Samurai Mask. I guess you. I guess. Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about this? Do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? Let's just say we have a problem. One thing does sort of stick out at me, Your Honor. Witness, I think you most definitely saw your client's face. 
Let's recall Mr. Power's testimony. Thank you. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. Matt gave the bellboy a tip. You received quite a large roll of cash from Mr. Ongar. And at that time, he was not wearing his nickel samurai mask. Oh! Oh no, dude! Dude! Yes, now that you mention it, I do remember that. Witness. Yes, that night I did wander the floor as a bellboy. I received plenty of tips that night for carrying juice to the various rooms. Is that so wrong? Huh? The man who gave me that tip was not my client. He was probably just a very generous person. Yeah, no way. I'm sorry, but sadly we're not nearly so generous here. If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I stand around here prosecuting? The deja vu. Isn't a salary more than enough for one man? It's more than gumshoes. Bam, 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 bam. Hmm. And where is your evidence that the large roll of cash was not in fact a tip? Come, Mr. Edgeworth. Show me the money! What? Mr. Attorney... Y yes You know, I think your line of questioning has been a little strange. In fact, I would say you don't seem to believe Miss Andrews is my client. Oh no. It, it, it's not like that at all. I, I just think lies aren't a good thing, you know? Oh. I know and agree. Lies are not a good thing at all. Ugh. I think we are on the same page now, aren't we, Mr. Attorney? Remember, if I feel threatened in any way, I am free to cut contact at any time. I'm sorry, please forgive my foolishness. Hmm. If only you were this apologetic all the time. Watch your mouth before I run up there and throw hands with you, old man. Anyway, I do not see a huge contradiction here. Therefore, you may continue, witness. We've pretty much reached the end of our rope here. Huh? Seems like we're still okay to me. And that's exactly what is so bad. At the rate we're going, we will end up completely destroying the killer's lie. If we do that... You already know how serious of a situation that will put us in. Uh, oh yeah. All I can do now is pray that those items reach us in time. So what do you want me to do? <laughs> um... I mean, what? So wait. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. It's for two or three other things. Okay, let's do this, right. Because this is where he pressed me, right? Press further. Now let me press further again. Watch me fail. Okay, so let me actually save right here just in case I'm wrong. Yeah, press my press further. Yeah, let's push our luck. Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what those other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine. After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was that figurine? It was inside Mr. Karita's suitcase. How the hell would that thing fit inside a suitcase? And then? What did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. Hmm. This information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just stated in your testimony. As you wish, your honor. 
One of these was to find the bear figurine and give it to Adrian Andrews. Um, okay, let me press this, but I feel like right away I could present something. Where is the picture? Hold on. I found this figurine at Mr. Ongard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what is it doing there? I was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. Ongard, I'm sure. Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? What? Okay, sub- sub answers? Yes, there's a contradiction. So, the killer says he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews. But I know somewhere in that statement there is a contradiction. And yet, I know that if I present something trivial here... You will cut the connection on his end! If you want to make a strong point, Phoenix, you have to prevent- to present strong evidence. That's right. So now what, Dr. Wright? <laughs> uh, fa- what do I have? Um... Oh, uh, maybe the bear itself. Only Corita and Andrews know how to open it, right? Let me try presenting evidence, and I'm just gonna present the bear. Witness, let's go over this one more time. You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine, and she told you to take the bear and wait for her- wait. And she told you to take the bear and wait for her at On Guard Mansion. Is that correct? Yes, where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. W what This is a battle of wits. I can't let up on him. I don't think it's possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. Shelly to kill her. If you had really given the bear to Miss Andrews, then this item should. Ooh. Okay. I didn't put that together, but I had a feeling it was the bear. So if she did receive it, dude, she wouldn't wait and try to frame Matt. She would open it and take. Dude. Okay. This item should not have been inside. This item. This item. I see where you're going. Yup. That's where I'm going. Where is everyone going? D do I need to pack a suitcase? Your Honor, please think back to Miss Andrew's testimony. And I was going to burn it. For her sake. <sighs> if even for a single minute this bear had actually been in Miss Andrew's hands, I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. Order, order, order. So that's where you two were going. So by the very fact that the suicide note was still inside the bear, it tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. W which means? It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client. Oh! Oh, order, order. Oh, I can't say order in the judge's voice, that shit hurts. Uh, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Nani? I, I'm sure I mentioned this before, how I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You... You must wish to break your end of our agreement. N no, that's not... That's enough. If that is your intention, then there is only one thing for me to do. W wait please Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. 
no, please, not that, please wait. Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end and I may stay my hand. Otherwise... Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying, I'm so like... Uh, what in the... Mr. Wright, are you... Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, your honor. I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. Do you think there is a need to hear more testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should... Edgeworth, we can't do this. If we keep this up, Maya... She'll... Uh, uh, prosecution... I... W what has come over, everyone? Even you are... The prosecution... Rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, your honor. Wh what? The dude, the judge's voice ver barely cracks, bro. That was that was tight. Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. If the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then, even though I am reluctant, <sighs> excuse me, eh, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelley DeKiller's client is. Adrian Andrews. Nani? <laughs> Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. If I end the trial here, right now, then your client, Matt Ongard, would be declared innocent. And in his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. Miss Andrews would be charged with murder. I'm so... Uh, I'm not feeling good. The prosecution has no further questions, so we will now hear the defense's final remarks. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Matt Ongar, to the stand. The items from Mr. DeKiller's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could. But it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Yikes, bro. <laughs> Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. Dude. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. Dude. Ha! <laughs> He's doing this in court? What is he doing revealing himself? I'm so confused. So, I guess even the old fuddy-duddy figured me out. Mr. Ongard? What an atrocious lawyer I have. Giving his own client up like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap. It's just as atrocious, don't you agree? Edgeworth is like nanny. Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Nanny? Should I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? But... But if I did that, Maya will die. But if I say he's innocent, then Miss Andrews will be charged as the murderer. Do 
I say he's guilty or not guilty? Either choice I make, someone's life is going to end. It all hinges on what I choose. This doesn't feel... What the f... Let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, then your client, Mr. Matt Ongard, is innocent. Hmph. <laughs> There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer's going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't. I can't do this. But I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, Matt Ongard, is... <laughs> Stop. Okay, the evidence could still be on its way, right? Yes, it didn't get here in time, but like, it can still get here, right? Dude, I swear this dude is guilty. He would not be flaunting all this much if it wasn't true. And Adrian's point still stands where she was saying, like, when I really stumbled into his room, I really thought that Matt did it. Where, where was she the entire time, though, right? He was taking a nap. He could have done it before then. And plus, like, it's all about Maya. And plus, if... Like I said, this dude could just be, like, an evil guy. But his butler is the killer, and he knows that all too well. Dude, he's guilty. Screw it, he's guilty. Guilty, bro. I I may have just got the wrong ending, but I don't care. We are waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. Matt Ongard, your client deserves an answer. Maya, I'm sorry. Matt Ongard is... Whoa, no! <laughs> Stop! No, I was not expecting her! <laughs> yes! Yes, bro, yes! That's right, we needed her to track down, uh, Gumshoe! Francisca von Karma, my baby! What are you doing? Ow! You see now, don't you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off of that scruffy fool. Did you bring them? The final pieces, do you have them? You should know better than to ask that, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Avant Karma is perfect in every way. The evidence is here in perfect condition. Uh, don't worry about Scruffy. He's fine, and his injuries are minor. All of the items are inside this, his coat. W what a filthy old coat this is. That's Gumshoe's coat. I can spot his tattered rags anywhere. Right, I knew right away. I apologize for its ugliness, but there is nothing else to wrap the items in. Uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Dude, this is heat. I fought long and hard this whole trial. All for what is inside that raggedy coat. I'm sure that inside that coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. Your Honor, inside that filthy coat are the defense's final pieces of evidence. Y your final evidence? I told you this is going to be like a three hour video, dude. I'm at an hour 40 already. This trial is already over. All that remains is for me to hand down my verdict. I do not believe that any evidence presented now would change the outcome of this trial. Uh, you best start thinking different, Judge. Hello? Objection. Right. Your Honor, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence down to the last. I request that Miss Von Karma be allowed to present these pieces of evidence. Mm. 
I suppose you are right. Mr. Edgeworth, I grant permission to do so. However, there's this one obvious rule applies here. If these items do not bring up any new points, they will be not accepted by this court. They will not be accepted by this court. Evidence law, right? <laughs> it's some evidence law. Now, Miss Von Karma, if you please. These pieces of evidence are items left by the killer during his escape from the police. Hmm. He must have been in quite a rush. Yes, Your Honor. The killer left three pieces of evidence. Somewhere among the evidence we're about to see, there will be something that will turn this whole situation around. Like a miracle. I'm sure of it. That is all we can hope for. Oh my god. Um, maybe the one that he used to shoot you with? Okay, we can do that. Okay, a pistol. Okay. Does the killer's pistol have anything to do with this case? Eh, kinda, technically. I, I think he used it maybe to have shot... Okay, just question more details. Like, does that pistol have any relation to this case? We have yet to perform a ballistics test, so I can't say anything for certain. Dude, I, I think that's what he shot you with. It, it, that's... okay. Sorry I didn't read that, but I'm, I'm excited. Nani? That's the pistol that he used to shoot you, isn't it? That's what I believe, yes. Oh. I kept the bullet they removed from my shoulder as a sort of memento. I'm sure it will be an excellent sample for the test. Smart. I love you, Franziska. So that's the pistol that was used to shoot Franziska. It's probably not going to help us very much. Small caliber pistol that is thought to have been fired by the killer at Franziska. Okay. That's the holy grail right there, bro. But the killer took that from On Guard Mansion. Have you checked the contents of that tape? Unfortunately, there is no time to. Oh, yeah, sorry. But I would speculate that this tape is very important. Why would you say that? Because he came back to his hideout for it. D the killer went back for it? That's right. It looks like he was trying to recover it. He injured three of the officers at the site. Dang, this dude is active. Hmm. But somehow, it looks like they managed to protect it from the killer. Shelley the killer is no ordinary man. I agree. One of the items retrieved. Do the killer violently tried to recover it. Contents unknown. Can we please be on some episode 5 and watch it? Like, is this the DS? Bro, this is the holy trinity of evidence, if, honest, if I'm being honest. Like, it, it, let's just put him away, can't we? Like, the last piece of evidence is this bellboy's uniform. Is that a uniform from the Gatewater Hotel? Was that used during the crime? I am almost certain it was. There's even a pair of black leather gloves in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it. The killer was wearing this on the night of the murder. <laughs> the murder. <laughs> There's one thing I found interesting about this uniform. And what is that? There is a button missing on this uniform. A button. It's a very unique button. I'm sure if it were to rec I'm sure if we were to recover it, it would provide us with an interesting clue. Hmm. Worn by the killer on the night of the murder, one of its special buttons is missing. One of its special buttons is missing. Dude, if we find that on Matt Ongard's person, that is all I ha that, bleh, that is all I have to present, Your Honor. Hmm. It's just as I thought. And what is that, Your Honor? <clears throat> I'm sure we are under normal circumstances. These items from Shelly to Killer's hideout would be very important clues. However, your question is not who did the killing. It is who is the client. Yes, that is correct. 
And these three items do not tell us anything about that. Uh, thank you for your hard work, Miss Von Karma. You may step down now. Uh, excuse me, wait, Your Honor. Please allow me to examine this new evidence. Overruled. You this court has already, already has all the evidence it needs to hand down a verdict. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. This judge is such a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix! I knew it. There's no such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. But you have but you have to make that miracle happen. You've come this far. You can't give up now. But but no matter how you think about it, it's it's try for my sake. Just think about it for a second. There are two ways out of the si Two? The first. <laughs> Dude, his sprite is actually great. Make On Guard wish from the bottom of his soul for a guilty verdict. Make On Guard wish from the bottom of his soul for a guilty verdict. Because right now he wants an acquittal. Right. Huh? The killer will always place his client's wishes first. If On Guard himself wishes to be convicted, then he will let his hostage go. Ooh, if On Guard himself wishes to be convicted, then he will let his hostage go. Yeah, right. Th that may be true, but that's asking me to do the impossible. The second way... Forced the killer to end his contract with the On Guard. Ooh. Right. I like that second one. If the killer were to no longer think of On Guard as his client, then he would let Maya go. Mia, that's even more impossible. He is a man who values his duty towards his client above all else. I know both of these seem like impossible feats at first, but if you could make either one happen, it would truly be a miracle. The bigger problem is, the judge has already said he doesn't need any more evidence. The pieces he was just shown, he's not accepting them. Phoenix, think things through from the other side. Isn't that what has always worked for us? Nani? The other side? Wait, does she mean... You mean... To turn things around? Phoenix, the judge says he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? The person who needs the evidence. Uh... Edgeworth? <laughs> Us? The defense, prosecution, and the judge. We have seen all the pieces of evidence. And that is how we have come to know the truth. But there is one person who has yet to see them all. The killer? And that person does not know the truth. That truth. It may be what will bring about the miracle in the end. Franziska? Maybe? There are no objections this time, correct? Now then, I will pronounce my verdict. Why don't we all respectfully sit back and listen, kids? Objection! Ugh. <laughs> I have already told you, Mr. Wright. This court does not need any more evidence. I am not saying it is us that needs the evidence, Your Honor. Then you want to show the evidence to that person? Yes, Your Honor. 
please, your honor. Mr. Wright, for you to ask with such passion, I will grant you one chance. W one chance? God, my neck hurts. God damn it, I hate this. I really don't know what they're talking about. Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. That's impossible to turn this situation around in one try. One try. That is all I will permit. I have to try to remember. Everything that has happened up to this point. Think, Phoenix. Think. There must be a way to save Maya while taking Ongard down at the same time. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's not waste any more time. I don't know! Who would you like to show evidence to? I hate this! Pearls? I don't know! <laughs> Um... Matt Ongard's been here the whole time, right? I'm so stuck, dude. I don't know. Who would you like to show evidence to? I got it wrong, bro. I, I can already tell I got it wrong. I see. And now, tell this court what one piece of evidence you would like to show this person. Oh. Why? <gasps> oh my god, Matt Ongard was talking about how he has... Like, he can blackmail the killer, right? Or maybe I was wrong. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, um, I think there is some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. Bailiff, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. Alright, it looks like I managed to convince him, shit. Okay. <laughs> That's right, I forgot about that. Maya, she's okay, right? Didn't I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Now, if I understand correctly, you wish to show me one piece of evidence. Yes, one is all I need. I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. I heard you injured three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most regrettable. However, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. He doesn't know what's on it. I don't think he knows what's on it. If he did, I think he would destroy it. Because it has his face on there. His anonymity means everything. And plus the client... the, the client... thing relation. Oh my god, dude. This is excellent. I'm afraid I seem to have failed in that regard. Do you know the contents of this tape? I was sternly... <laughs> I was sternly told by my client not to watch it. So I have absolutely no idea. Actually, you are on this tape. Me? There was a video camera hidden at the crime scene. Mm. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is that true, Mr. Wright? Who... 
who was it that planted a camera? Well, the only person who could have placed a camera at the scene of the crime would be your client, naturally. Nani? But that was Adrian Andrews. Be quiet and listen, Your Honor. Y yes, sir. Your client specified a place and time for you, isn't that right? Yes. That was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright, why would my client do such a thing? Because he doesn't know, bro. What was I talking about earlier? How he doesn't know about his persona. Right? He doesn't think he's evil at all. I would like to know why. Why did Matt Ongard film the crime scene? Save button. The reason why he did that is my ticket out of this whole mess. There is only one reason why your client would secretly film the crime scene. Your client once told me something very interesting. We were talking about you, and this is what they said. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. Least of all assassins. Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want! Your client didn't trust you at all. They were thinking of using this video to blackmail you. What do you have to say to that, Shelly the Killer? You sweating oil, bro. Oh! Well, he's steaming, bro. He upset. It looks like. It looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. Yes, by a natural. That is the kind of person they are. Your client is a person who only thinks and plots of how to use the people around them to protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. Yeah? You told us one thing numerous times during your testimony. You said that you detest traitors, most of all. Yes, that's right. But what if that traitor was your own client? What would you do then? That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then... That client would become my next target. For the honor of the De Killer name. Even if it takes an eternity, I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. Whoa! <laughs> hmm. I see. That's all I wanted to know. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target? I get it. This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright? Yes? My contract with my client is over as of now. I see them to have- I seem to have a new job on my hands. I will now return to you, your precious item. What the- I'm- what the- I'm not an item! Maya, I thought I'd never see you again. Oh, thank goodness. Oh my god, bro. Two hours of some hard lawyer work, bro, and we're here. We're here. Um, this trial appears to have come to its conclusion, I guess. However, I... Actually, I'm sort of... I don't quite know what just happened there with... Uh, Ms. Von Karma, where did that... Ms. Von Karma, where did that... 
She always has you in her sights. Now, I do believe it's time to finally hand down a verdict. Uh, we got you! We got you! God, I haven't felt this good about Ace Attorney in a long time. Mr. On Guard, it looks like somehow you got what you wanted. You will finally receive the acquittal you wanted so badly. You should be happy. But before that, I would like to make one final statement. Sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear before you. Needless to say, that man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you would understand what I mean if you watched this video. Oh my god! Help me, Mr. Attorney. Now then, Your Honor, the verdict, if you please. I is this all right with you, Mr. Wright? We have finally reached the end of a very long battle. Whether he's convicted or acquitted, there is no escape for him now. Go on, Phoenix. Plead whichever way your heart tells you. Right, Chief. Plead guilty, bro. I'm sorry, but, like, we lose. Like I said, Ace Attorney, bro, we're, we're, we lose. It's easy. Plead guilty, bro. Matt on guard. Even though I am a lawyer, I cannot make your crime disappear. I think a guilty verdict is appropriate here. M me? My wonderful self? G guilty? Even if you got an acquittal, the instant you set foot outside the detention center, your life would be in danger. No matter which way you look at it, you can't run away from your crime anymore. Oh, he did that. Never thought those scratches would have came from himself, Ruff. As always, it looks like we have uncovered the real truth. We? I don't remember you helping out much in this, Judge. Mr. Edgeworth, how was Matt on guard? I have left Miss Von Karma in charge of his incarceration. I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip leather right about now. Very good. That was a close one, wasn't it, Witness? Yes. Oh, Adrian Andrews, I'm sorry. I just, I, you deserve an apology from me. I really thought <laughs> when the killer was talking, you were in the person. I'm sorry, Adrian Andrews. I'm sorry, Adrian Andrews. Jeez. I plan to pay my debt to society for my own crime, Your Honor. Sad. The first time I was called to the witness stand during the trial, all I felt was despair. She must be talking about the time Edgeworth really went after her. Yeah, he laid into her ass, bro. Oh. I guess she's trying to forgive him for what he did. This witness. How should I put this? She has an illness. If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. Jeez. But, after all that, when I was alone at the detention center, that's the first time I really saw myself for who I am. And today... When the two of you used your combined strength to convict Matt, I... I felt like I had finally been saved. This music too! <laughs> da, da, da. Wow. This is the- Dude, this feels like episode 5, like Lana Sky. It's the first time I've ever seen her smile. I am really happy that you two were in charge of this case. I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. This is... This is the first time I felt comfortable with myself. With who I am. Thank you so much, everyone. It looks like we have resolved everything at last. 
As for myself, there are still a few things I'm confused about. But everyone seems to be in good spirits. And that is good enough for me. That is all. This court is adjourned. My god, brother. March 23rd. 5.14 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3, bro. You were great out there, Phoenix! What I did out there was right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client off. You've got the make guilty verdict this time. But you have to look past all of that to what's really important. You now realize that there is something more than just getting a not guilty, right? Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a second. Think to the moments before Miss Von Karma arrived with the final pieces of evidence. Think about the incredible decision you had to make. Oh yeah, to get him guilty or not guilty? Now then, Mr. Wright. Oh, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. Yep. I can count on the evidence. I can't count on- I have to listen to my heart. Should I side with justice or should I save Maya's life? My client, Matt Ongard, is... Yep. Jeez. Is he guilty? Or is he not guilty? Those were your choices then. And your answer... Your answer spoke to being a lo to be f Your answer spoke to what being a lawyer means to you. Right. N Ed Edgeworth, Jesus Christ. I have good news. Maya is now safe in police custody. <sighs> yes! God! Pearls, give me a hug, bro. We did it, bro. Really? B pearls You're telling us the truth, right, Mr. Edgeworth? Y yes She's quite safe. She's on her way here as we speak in a patrol car. You missed it, Maya! Mr. Maya's safe! You did it! You really did it, Mr. Nick! Ow! She punches deceptively hard for a kid. Why is she punching me? I- I believe in you! I kept saying to myself, Mr. Nick will save her! Mr. Nick will save her! Ah! <laughs> uh, um... Thanks? Oh! What's wrong? Miss Von Karma! I want to give you a hug too. Thanks for coming in clutch, girl. Can I please buy you some dinner? Um... About earlier... Uh... Thanks. Ow! Why are you still smiling, Mr. Phoenix Wright? You... you lost. Your perfect win record has now been crushed. And yet, you are still happy. I don't think you'll ever understand, Miss Von Karma. How dare you? Don't worry. She may, she may in time. After all, I was like that myself until a year ago. Ed Edgeworth. For my own personal victories, and for guilty verdicts. This track is like... Oh my god, I need this too. I need this one for the channel as well. I used every dirty trick in the book, and so my win record remains spotless. But... A man appeared and stood fast against that selfish me. I fought him in my usual manner, and tasted my first defeat. I felt like I had lost everything because of that. And then... Jeez. It was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. And I was saved by that person I called my enemy. I couldn't forgive myself for all that had happened, so I left the prosecutor's office. And I left that note. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. Oomph. 
as well you should have. A prosecutor has, who has shamed himself with defeat should crawl into a hole and die. But that was not what happened. After I left the prosecutor's office, I finally came to realize something. And it was in that moment of clarity that everything began to change. What foolish nonsense. We prosecutors, you, they, we prosecutors use anything we can to attack the defendant. But every time we did so... Ugh! No matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people, that man would hold strong with his, with his undying faith. And then, before I knew it, I began to trust in that man as well. But what? You trusted your enemy? It doesn't matter how underhanded tricks, how many underhanded tricks a person uses. The truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is to fight with the knowledge we hold and everything we have. Erasing the paradoxes one by one. It's never easy. We claw and scratch for every inch. But we will always eventually reach that one single truth. This, I promise you. The truth? <clears throat> Damn, that was terrible. Yes. That's the reason why prosecutors and defense attorneys exist. But I'm sure you already knew that, didn't you? Right. That's why you couldn't forgive me. This man who went into hiding. Isn't that right? This man who only had his sights set on victory. Who ran away into the night. Uh, is, is Mr. Edgeworth right, Mr. Nick? You really let me down. When you disappeared, I felt betrayed. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with was because I believed in the things you said to me all those years ago. And you... You betrayed your own words. That's why, one year ago, I made up my mind. I decided that the Miles Edgeworth I knew had died. At least, that's what I told myself. You pathetic fool. Miss Von Karma! I don't want to hear the wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser. Ivan Karma is someone who is destined to be perfect. Miles Edgeworth, you are no longer worthy. You are no longer worthy of being a Von Karma. And neither am I. It's over. It's all over. Francisca threw something on the ground just now. This is an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that the thing she used to track Detective Gumshoe? I'll return this to the precinct later. Shh, no way! Dude, she always stays with her whip. She left that too? There's something else. <gasps> ah! Isn't that Miss Von Karma's whip? I'll never set foot in another courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's saying by this action. You should keep this right. Um... Okay, I guess. <laughs> Nick! <laughs> My, uh... My, uh... Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Ah! I'm so happy! I'm so happy! Oh, Nick. I knew you would come through. You got on guard convicted, like I knew you would. And on top of that, you even rescued me. Well, of course I did. You know I would never desert you. We should have pressed our luck at this trial. Jesus Christ, you should have been here. You're lucky to be standing here. Whatever, whatever. Look, it's over, okay? Besides, if I did croak, I would just come back and haunt you like a bad ghost through Pearly. That... 
you guys and your, like, dead jokes. That's... Is it really that easy to do something like that? Th thanks a lot, Nick. Uh, don't mention it. Maya. Oh! Mr. Edgeworth! Um, I'm relieved you're all right. Hey, it looks like you've made some real progress, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, well, I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a year ago. <laughs> Dude, she is starving. We're about to go eat some delicious, juicy, inexpensive burgers. All right. I think it's time we got out of this depressing place. Huh? Where are we going? Food, Nick! Food! Grub, chow, I'm starved! I'm so hungry, even you look like a nice, juicy burger on a bun, Nick. <clears throat> you... you think I look like a burger? I'm a prime rib at least, baby! Ah! Come with us, Mr. Edgeworth, please! Uh, um, if you insist. Alright, so how about we hit up our usual burger joint? Don't be silly, Nick. Huh? Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening and got in the way of my gourmet food. So I've decided that we have to make it up by having another feast. Uh, another feast? Come on, Nick! Food! Uh. God damn, this is a long video. I'm not cutting this into two parts either. This is like a movie. Oh, like, mm -mm. Hey, pal. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Gumshoe, my man, are you all right? Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I would hit a telephone pole, of all things. A telephone pole? And it wasn't a red light that got him. You did it again, city boy. I felt like my dear old heart was going to give out on me. And I ain't joking. Yeah. It was more exciting than the very last episode of the Steel Samurai. Thanks. Now look at here, Mr. Snooty Prosecutor. Don't you reckon you bullied Mr. Wright too hard? If you don't start being a lot nicer to him, he just might kick it. Tonight, even. Um, I'll keep that in mind. Well, come on now. Everyone gather round. Y'all are gonna get your picture taken by a genuine professional photographer. Looks like Lada bought herself a new camera. Well, pal. At least we can put this messy case behind us now. Come on. Tonight's all about eating. So let's go chow down, pal. Amen to that, pal. Amen. You know, when you think about it, you are the one who saved the day, detective. Huh? Me? You really think so? He's right. If it wasn't for the three items you took, I think this trial would have had a very different ending. Ah, oh, well, you know. <laughs> huh? Wait. That's odd. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. What? Yeah, I'm sure I put one of the items in my coat pocket. There was a fourth item? Aw, oh, come on, y'all. It's over. <laughs> but who, boy, I tell you, you really are something else. Between getting accused of murder and getting kidnapped. <laughs> Never a dull moment with you, huh? <laughs> you think? Why does she look so happy about that? But being shut away for two whole days... Weren't you scared? Yeah, it was really scary. I felt so hopeless. So, to keep my mind off of things, I drew a picture. Sounds like you had a rough girl, gal. So where's this picture of yours? Yay, I want to see it! I want to see Mystic Maya's picture! <laughs> hmm. You know, I don't know where it went. Aww, 
that's too bad. Well, it's all right. It wasn't anything important anyway. I guarantee you, bro, she drew to killer's face. She drew to killer's face. Sure is nice to finally see them both smiling again. Oh my god. Hmm? What is it, Edgeworth? This thing is picking something up. Ah, that's me. That's Miss Von Karma's receiver. Uh, thanks to her, I had the most awful experience of my life, sir. I can't believe she stuck a tracking device on me. That's odd. Even though you're standing right here, the tracking device seems to be in a different location. Oh, it's probably busted or something, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the extra item and that shit is not sitting well with me. I'm... I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. I still have some work to do. Huh? But Mr. Edgeworth, you haven't even eaten anything yet. You've eaten way too much, you glutton. Phoenix, relax. I had fun tonight. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait. What? I just want to say thanks, Edgeworth. You really saved me out there. Hmm. If anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I feel like words alone aren't enough here. Can we hug, bro? God damn it, I hate this. This usually is at the end of all the uh, episodes, isn't it? Um, why would I give him the whip? I gave him my attorney's badge? Stop it. Um, can I give him the whip? I, f I feel like the whip is the only thing I can really give him. Here's an outdated autopsy report. Okay, stop. You just give him the whip. What's this? Did I get it right? Dude, I never get these right. Thank you. It's all thanks to you two. You and her. You don't need to thank me. I was only doing my job. That was nice. Bro, I want them to hug. Come on now. It looks like Mr. Edgeworth has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, Mystic Maya! Hmm? Yes, Pearly? I guess you two can go back to being lovey-dovey, right? You and Mr. Nick, I mean. But, Pearly! Would you cut it out already? You're embarrassing me. Um, anyway. So, who's paying for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask. Everyone say, thank you to Nick. Huh? Uh, yeah. I'm kind of at the point where I can't even buy instant noodles, pal. So, I kind of already put your name on the bill. Huh? Huh? Yeah! I got me a situation just like that myself. There's this camera shop in this hotel, see? And I just bought myself this good old beauty here. It better be anyhow for $3,000. Huh? 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 Actually, I reckon you bought it for me since it's on your tab and all. Huh, 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 huh. Ha! Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Miss. Yeah, Nick. Why do I suddenly feel like screaming? Aw, don't be. Don't. <laughs> you don't need to hold back now, you hear? Yeah, pal. Time to let it all out. This is going to be the first time I hear the real you! Go on. It's been a while since I heard you say it. I've been busy being a hostage and all. Alright then, if you say so. <laughs> I'm so happy, bro. This dude. 
You really came through for me, Nick. I had to hide that letter, but I knew you'd find it. I really feel like I've been living on the edge lately. I mean, I've escaped death three times now. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? I feel like a pro. Jesus Christ. Dude, this game is amazing. Some parts of it aren't, but I'll, I'll touch on that in a little bit. Let's just wait till the credits are over. I'm so happy that you could save Mystic Maya, Mr. Nick. And I'm so happy for the two of you. Speaking of which, I think this hotel is a popular place for honeymooners. So I sort of made reservations for the two of you just in case. You're nine. Uh, okay. Stop. Background graphics. I applaud you guys. Jeez. Well, pal. It looks like I'm back on the force again. Mr. Edgeworth had a long talk with the chief, and he got me reinstated. I heard he said things like, letting that one go is bad for all of society. I knew it. Crashing headlong into everything is the only way to live, pal. Gumshoe's just always on and off the fence, brother. I feel bad for him, to be honest. I, Maggie Bird, am retiring this uniform as of today, sir. I'm going to be a waitress from now on. And bring smiles and joy to the people who come to the restaurant, sir. I hope you'll stop by sometime, Mr. Wright. I forgot about you, dude. This dude... That's what you get when you take, like, eight months to play a game. Hmm, yes. Are you here to visit a patient? Hmm? I I'm Director Hottie. Recently, yes, that girl, you know, I haven't seen her around, hmm. But I remember, even if I laid so much as an eye on her, it would go crack. It didn't matter if I got whipped, though. Yes, hmm. Dude. This is so excellent. It's time to begin our quest for of world circus domination. To let the world know we are serious. I plan to make a fabulous sight in Zimbabwe. Hey, Max, what do you think Zimbabwe is like? Do you think there are castles made of cake and bunnies who can talk? What the f***? Uh, I think if there are any talking bunnies, even they won't laugh at Moe's jokes. Oh, where's Mo? Come on, I want to do Moe's voice at least one more time. I'm really done with this game, are you kidding? There you go. I'm ready. I'm ready. There's no way these jokes are gonna fall on deaf ears. I'm going to be more contemporary with my humor. Mo Turtles r r r represent We've got a new act all worked out. Prepare for the Hallelujah Circus. Say something, will you? You're supposed to start this off. Get on with it. What's this? Drat. It's just an ordinary electric razor. I can't believe this. Really. How long do they plan on making me do this? Ah, but it's Edgy Pooh's idea. So that means it must have been deep hidden meaning. But, well, why do I get the feeling they wouldn't forget about me? Would they? It was never like this in the old days. Everyone thought the world of me. They used to call me Queen Wendy and treat me like royalty. And the man who has an heart would feel the pain in my heels and they're going to spit the bread. Bang, bang, bang. Special thanks, Katsumi Marunaga and Hiroyuki Kudo, I think. Uh, Kim Kumiko Sukani and Yukari Suwabi, right? I appreciate everything you and Mr. Edgeworth did for me from the bottom of my heart. Oh, that's right, I received a letter from Miss Von Karma. She said that after I got out, I should feel free to consult her about anything at all. I'm really thankful to have met everyone. I'm really sorry, Adrian Andrews. I, I really, like, put pressure on you. Like, verbally. Both in the court and just me, personally. The gamer. It has become difficult for me in this country as of late. As such, I will take a short leave of absence. If you would like to request my services, please be sure to visit my homepage. May we both be blessed with longevity. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, it broke. Shinji Mikami 
dudes and dudettes, bro. I was about to say post post credit scene. International departures. Someone's leaving the country. This is that same day. Where are you going, Franziska? How did you know I was here? With this. That's... I heard you were planting things on a certain person. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. Humph. It's just like you. I only planted it there because he was always wearing it. This filthy drab coat of his. I don't know how it ended up in my luggage. But it's going in the trash, I promise you that. Oh, that's right. Speaking of that man, he told me something very interesting. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. Four things? Seems he put the last one in his coat pocket. He put it in here? It doesn't matter anymore. The case is already over. Nothing is ever finished, bro. What are you going to do now? That's none of your business. Are you running away? Shut up! You don't understand a thing. You can't possibly understand what it means to be Manfred von Karma's daughter. Francisca. So many expectations from everyone around me. Expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to win no matter what. And failure? Such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius. There's no doubt about that. But... But me. I'm no genius. I've always known that. But I... I had to be one. I had to. You may not be a genius like your father. But... You are a prosecutor. You have been, you have been, and always will be. No, I'm not. Not anymore. I've even thrown my whip away. Speaking of that, Wright gave this gave me this to hold on to. Right. You knew something like this would happen, didn't you? Not really, to be honest. If anything, I, I just gave you the whip because it seemed like the only thing I could really give you as Edgeworth. What else was I gonna give you? <laughs> the gun? I'm going to say this again. We prosecutors do not fight for personal honor or pride. I hope you will like I hope meh. I hope you will think deeply about what you should be striking down with that whip. You haven't changed a bit. You've always... You've always left me alone and walked on with ahead without me. Miles Edgeworth. I've always hated you. And then, finally, my chance to take my revenge on you arrived. If I could win against that man, I could make Phoenix Wright bow down in defeat. And this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. I see. You know, I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything I've been until today. I believe you can. Just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews? You were going to use her during the trial, right? But you... You were dependent on your father by using his tactics, isn't that right? Humph. <laughs> Today, you chased after me, after I had left you behind all these years. And that's why you were standing here now, side by side. But... I have no intention of stopping. If you say you are going to quit your walk- If you are saying to qu are you- what the f- If you say you are going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path- Okay. 
And this is where we part ways. Francisca von Karma. Oh. I. I. I am Francisca von Karma. Don't think I'm going to walk on your shadow forever. Our battle begins now. So you had better prepare yourself, Miles Edgeworth. Phoenix Wright, one day, someday, I'm sure we'll meet again in battle. Until then, this last piece of evidence that never made it to you. I'll take good care of this fourth piece, so I can give it to you when at last we meet again. Wait, wait, was that, wait, was that supposed, wait, was that just a joke? Or was that like a cliffhanger of some kind? I don't think that was a cliffhanger of some kind, hold on. Check this out, dude. Check this out, dude. Trials and tribulations, dude. Oh my gosh. I think I'm not going to start this for a while because I really went in on Ace Attorney this past, like, this past month, I'd say. I think I completed episode four in, like, I want to say a month or two. This game personally does require a lot of brain power <laughs> for me, so I think it's going to be a while before I start Trials and Tribulations. Justice for All is finished, dude. It's finished. That's crazy. I'm so, I'm so pleased with that game. So let me talk about it. Thinking back into all the episodes, right? I thought the first episode was sick. It was, it was like a nice kind of tutorial, right? For a sequel. Because if this was the first game, it would kind of be like, this isn't really making any sense. Like, I don't know who Phoenix Wright is. Like, sure, we could learn about him through, you know, coming back from amnesia, but like the fact that we already know him and like his quirks and whatnot, like the whole yelling objection and pointing thing, that's funny. So it was funny to see him come back to his self that we know, right? So good on Capcom for that. I love them for that. Episode two was the Korean Village shit with Morgan Fay, who was so trash. That one was cool. It introduced Pearls, who is now, I guess, a series regular. Lotta came back during that episode too. Uh, did I have problems with that episode? I think I had one huge problem with episodes 2, 3, and 4. Like, one part where I just struggled and could not find the answer. What, what was it for episode 2? I forgot. That one threw me for a twist, though. Because having, uh, what's-her-face? The, the Miney sisters, the Eeny Miney sisters, whatever sisters, whichever one it was that actually survived, like was the older sister, like the nurse, that was crazy. I, I'll be honest, I was not a huge fan of episode three. It just, the whole circus setting really was getting on my nerves, I'd say. But we did figure it out. Acro had his reasonings and those were kind of sad. I would say episode three was the most elusive. Like there were so there were a lot of uh, people, like a lot of witnesses, right? That kind of mismatched what each other were saying, and it was just a mess, to be honest, in my eyes. But we did find it out. I, I remember guessing on a few things, but whatever, we found it. In episode four, dude, gee whiz. I'd- you- dude, even this video, I was guessing who it was. This episode was- is probably- I don't want to say it's my favorite episode, but it might be. 
in terms of like regular Ace Attorney episodes, because episode 5 I would call an exception because it deals with like different gameplay and whatnot, I would say this has to be my regular, favorite regular Ace Attorney episode. Just because it's very, it feels kind of, it feels heavy because all the other people came back. Uh, Lotta came back, Will Powers came back, Gumshoe is back, like, you know, a few people. Francisca, even though she's basically a part of almost every episode. It was just nice, to, and Wendy Oldbag even. We haven't seen her since the first game, chapter two, or chapter, uh, episode three, my bad. And Matt on guard. That twist in, in, uh, part 19. <laughs> that made my brain race at a billion miles a minute, dude, cuz... Like, I really thought up until that point, he was just like, Matt Ongar, dude. Like, I'm just a TV action star. I thought it was going to be an instance of like, yeah, I like really wanted him dead. So I just like hired this assassin. Like, you know, like I didn't think it would be traced back to me. But even then, like you hired an assassin, you idiot. That's what I was trying to get at with like calling him an idiot and whatnot. But oh my God. I'm so sad, actually, it's over. I hate finishing games because, like, yes, there's a sequel, but there's no more of that game. I would love to have continued Justice for All. I would play that forever. But Trials and Tribulations is next! I'm so happy! <laughs> Trials and Tribulations, bro. What a great game, dude. The Ace Attorney series is fire by far. There are a few moments where, like, I'm kind of not into it, and that's just due to my negligence, right? Psyclox can kick rocks. I do not want to see those in Trials and Tribulations. Trials and Tribulations is next. If you liked this finale, this extremely long finale of Ace Attorney Justices for All, uh, please consider leaving a thumbs up. Leave a thumbs down if you hate me. I, I understand. Comment what you think of Justice for All if you've played it already, or even if you haven't. Along with the Ace Attorney series, you see what else I'm playing, so if you want to see any of that stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube, or following me over at Twitch with the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video, this long video, and sticking with me. I hope you have a wonderful day, night, evening, morning, afternoon. And please, be safe out there.